So I'm going to share with you here a really cool design technique using basic shapes, layers, and blending modes. It's a really interesting effect. So first thing I need to do is right here in this image, I'm going to create a new layer. And we're going to go over here and get our selection of our key tool. And right over here around the eye area, I'm just going to draw a box. And holding down my shift key, I'm just going to go anywhere on this image trying to keep it in the vicinity of the face though, and I'm just going to draw some arbitrary boxes just anywhere on this layout. Maybe a small one there, maybe there's a square here, about like that. And with that layer, that new layer active, I'm going to bring out my swatches palette, and I'm going to use varying shades of gray to build this design. So in this particular one, I'm going to go with relatively neutral gray, about 50%, and using my alt backspace or option delete, let's fill that layer and deselect, and then we'll create a new layer. Let's click on that new layer right there. And with that same marquee selection tool, I'm just going to start drawing more shapes in here. And holding down that shift key, we'll add some more. And you can see what I'm doing here is actually building these shapes around the face, because that's the main focus of our image here, of course. And I'm purposely overlapping where some of these boxes are appearing and you'll see why in a minute and it has an interesting effect when when we're done so I've got a few boxes there let's put one right about in the middle here actually let's make it a long one I like that and with these I'm going to use a relatively lighter shade of gray let's do that and then again we'll create a new layer and with that selection marquee we'll just draw some more boxes here maybe draw a big one there Something like that. Like I said, there's no real rhyme or reason to where I'm placing these boxes. I'm just arbitrarily putting them any old place. But keeping in mind, I'm just trying to close in the vicinity of the face here. And we'll just do this. And with these, we'll go with a really darker gray. Let's fill those in. And we'll create one last layer draw in some boxes for these remaining areas. Now I'm going to intentionally leave some of these areas untouched by any of these shapes, and you'll see why in just a moment. And with this one, we'll go with a much lighter color, almost a white, but not quite. Maybe even lighter, maybe even white altogether. Let's see what that does. So now I've got those varying shapes all built up around my face here, her face. Not my face, her face. So with that top layer active, I'm going to double click on that layer icon and bring up my layer styles. And I want to activate a drop shadow on these. I'm going to turn off global light so we can see that it shifts right there. It looks pretty good. And I'm going to drop this distance to about 3. And maybe bring the size to about 4. And I'm going to drop this opacity of this drop shadow to about 50%. And then I'm going to go up to my blending options here. I'm going to change this layer's overall blending mode to overlay. And you can see it kind of an interesting effect that's getting there. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I want to be able to apply that same layer style to all these other layers. So I'm going to go and hold down my control key or right click right on that layer style icon and pull down this menu and go down to copy layer style. I click on this layer, I hold down my shift key and select all the other layers I want to apply it to. And just anywhere in this blank area of, of any one of these layers, hold down the control key or right click and go down to paste layer style. And there it has gone ahead and applied that layer effect to all those other layers. So now I want to isolate this effect to just the face. I don't want to see any of the rest of this image. So in order to mask that out, I'm going to hold down my command or control key and click on this very top layer and load that as a selection. That's what it means when you get that little square selection tool by the hand there. And I'm also going to hold down my shift key on this one. You can see I get a little plus sign when I do that. Hold down the shift key and get a little plus sign in there and that's going to add to that selection when I click on this layer here. So you can see it adds to that. I'm going to click on all the other layers and add. And here are some, a couple of small areas in here that aren't selected because we didn't, I never drew any shapes in that area. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and use my marquee tool and just add, add those to that selection. And next, 
with my background, or the original background layer selected, and that selection is still active, I'm going to do Command or Control J to bring that selected area to its own layer. I'll turn off this background layer, and there you can see what we're getting is a pretty interesting effect. But we're not quite done yet. I'm going to bring up a hue saturation adjustment layer and do the colorize. And we'll kind of go with a blue effect here. And you can see, if I hit OK, we're getting a pretty interesting effect there. Now, this white looks like it might be a little harsh, so I could simply drop its opacity down and make it a little less intense. Or I could turn it off altogether, and there you can see we're actually yielding a pretty interesting effect. So by doing this all on separate layers in varying shades of gray with different blending modes, I have a greater de degree of control of how I could control the intensity of this design by turning off and turning on layers, dropping the opacity of them, really changing the intensity altogether. So it gives me a good deal of control, and it yields a really interesting effect, like as if it were built up of several different shapes. So, and if I even really wanted to, I could go into that hue saturation adjustment layer and change the color. So I have a lot of control over this, this design aspect, even though as complex as it might look, I've got really simple control over it, how it looks in the end. So as you can see with some experimentation, it's a really interesting effect. And if I just add a white background here so you can see the finished product, really quite simple. Give it a try, and we'll see you next time.